Hi, my name is Mike and this video is going to show you how to find top dead center as well as finding what your timing is on your engine. Uh, what you're looking at is a modified Honda GX200 clone but this procedure is, uh, is the same as any four cycle engine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the spark plug out as well as take the valve cover off. I've already taken the screws off the valve cover so you don't have to watch me do that. And what you have is you'll see two rockers on this engine. One is the exhaust, one is the intake. That will tell you at what stroke, what process the engine is in. Uh, one is for the intake which allows air and gas to come in and one is for the exhaust to allow gases out. Now as you turn it I'll get a better view here. Now we want to turn the, the, the flywheel around and you'll notice that the intake and exhaust, this is the exhaust, this is the intake, move up and down. Right now it's on the exhaust stroke. It's pushing down, opening the valve inside the head, allowing the exhaust gases to escape. The piston is pushing up at this point and it's reached the top. Now it's going to suck air and fuel in by, allow, by opening up the valve and allowing air to pass through. Now this is where we want to start putting a screwdriver in because now the piston is coming back up as this valve closes. It's coming back to the top and you want to find the approximate area, the approximate point that the, the piston reaches top dead center. Now this is only a, a, a guess. We will find how to get top dead center later on. Now right about this point you want to take a marker and mark the top of the, the flywheel. Now I have a bunch of marks on here already. This is a test. I use this as a test on, on several different engines. But we're going to put a new mark in red. The thinner the better. Now I have a mark right here that when I use my timing light it's going to show up and wherever it shows up I'm going to put a mark on the the casing of the uh, of the engine and then later on we'll show you how to f figure out what the timing is on your engine. Okay right now I have the timing light hooked up to the battery on my uh, handheld starter. I have put the one end to the trigger part into the spark plug uh, wire and the other one goes on to the top of the spark plug. Every time the engine goes around and uh, uh, this magnet energizes the coil, it's going to send a signal through here. Uh, this is this pickup wire is going to pick it up and light the light on here, which I'm going to shine on the the flywheel, and it'll tell me when this engine is firing. And then I put a mark uh, across from this line that I put earlier on the casing. Okay, now that we have a mark on the flywheel and the casing that we can line up later, we're going to take the valve cover back off and the spark plug out. And we are again going to try and find a rough approximation of where top dead center is at. Right now, it's on the intake stroke. I'm going to go all the way around so I can explain each, each stroke to you. Right now, the piston is going down and it is sucking air and fuel into the cylinder. It is coming back up at this point. The uh, uh, the rocker arm is back up in its in its in is uh, closed position. Well, the valve is in its closed position. The, uh, the rocker is already all the way back up, so it's on its compression stroke. Now this is where we'd actually want to be, but I'm going to go through it all 
and now it's going back down because the fuel has ignited pushing the piston back down and now the piston is coming back up forcing the exhaust gases through the open valve you can tell because the rocker is pushed down the valve is open and the exhaust gases are coming out the header now it's going back in the intake stroke it's sucking air and fuel back in and this is when we want to put the screwdriver in to find a rough approximation of top dead center and right there the screwdriver is going back down up back down now we want to put it down on the hole about a half inch and we want to put a stopper in this is a stopper if you've seen my other video on uh, finding top dead center uh, this, this is all going to look familiar to you this is a stopper uh, suppliers uh, sell sell some things like this uh, they're not too bad uh, as far as expense wise but this is made from hardware stuff that cost me about two bucks uh, some people use a uh, an old uh, spark plug they just break off the the porcelain and drill it out basically and then they can put a, a piece of all thread in there so it's adjustable wrong one now we're gonna put the stop in and what the stop's going to do is the piston's going to come up and it's going to hit the stopper. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see if I can get it. Now, the piston is coming up and it's hitting the bottom of this stopper. Now, what we want to do now is put the, uh, the degree wheel on. Okay, now that we have our piston top, uh, bottomed out, on the, the piston stop we're going to grab our degree wheel this degree wheel excuse me <coughs> goes from 0 to 90 back to 0 there are some that go from 0 to 180 and 0 to, to 360 I got this one uh, from uh, ARC as a free download uh, just printed out the piece of paper cut it out and glued it to a piece of cardboard you can buy them uh, they, they can go up to 60 70 dollars for a degree wheel uh, the benefits of a fiberglass or a plastic one is they don't tend to warp uh, as much as the paper one but for my application it's just fine so we're going to put the degree wheel on and since the piston is is uh, touching touching the stop make sure that it is you want to set the degree wheel to zero degrees hopefully this is going to eliminate some of the confusion when we, when, when we do the math in a few minutes all right it's at zero degrees now you want to turn the crank the opposite direction until it bottoms out again and there it is it's bottomed out and you want to take a reading and this is 62 since we started at zero and we're at 62 we're going to take that number 62 and divide it by two which is 31 so since it is bottomed out Make sure that it is, it doesn't kick back on you. It's bottomed out. We're going to change this to 31. Remember, we started at 0, we ended at 62, so we're trying to find the middle, and that's, that's 31. So we're going to turn this to 31, crank it down. There we go. And this pointer I want to point out is, uh, <laughs> is uh, just a piece of coat hanger that I ran inside and grabbed off the... Uh, out of the closet unfortunately it had my wife's shirt on it which is now laying on the bed um, so I gotta take care of that before she gets home uh, so right now we are at 30 make sure that's right 30 31 now we are gonna back the piston off the stop a little bit remove it and then we're gonna line up the marks that we made earlier with the timing light Now sometimes it, it wants to move on you. In this case, it's going to stay for me, I hope. Right there. And this is what makes the, 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 the line you make um, as, as thin as possible. Because a fatter line, you just don't know exactly where it should line up. Here, it's a fairly thin line. And right there. And you go back and you read. And this shows 26 degrees. And that is 26 degrees before it hits, before the piston hits top dead center 
the spark plug is going to fire. And that is how you set your timing. There's a couple things that I want to point out to you. And one is, is this wrench. And this is what uh, uh, I use to um, set the, uh, uh, the torque on, to hold the, to hold the flywheel to set the torque on the flywheel. It's rather cheap. You get a small one and a large one. The small one's too small for the flywheel, but the large one fits beautifully. You can use it four or five times before this one actually had broken off. And it's about three or four bucks, and it comes from Harbor Freight. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me on Forcycle, Mike 00B, or just leave a comment on YouTube. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the outtakes. Uh, you need to get the marks and. Uh, now in order to, to uh, find timing, you know what, the timing, I should say, on the, uh, on, the on this is a, well this is a la, 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 la. on each side of the, uh, of, 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 yeah. This process is, uh, is uh, the same on any four cycle or two cycle engine. Uh, no it's not. Uh, so this would be the intake, you know, huh. Hi, my name is Mike and I'm going to show you, uh, uh, I need another shot. And the reason why it's called a four cycle, like, you don't need to know that if you're working on these engines. The, uh, yeah, one, one of those things. So anytime you're working on any engine is nice that it bottoms out in the other. And it does, and the piston doesn't move. Actually, you don't have to do that at all. I just like doing that. Later on, we can uh, yeah. where the piston is uh, in the in the in the four-stroke. Eh.